It's time to sit back and check out the RCWR show with Lee Sanders. Get fun, in-depth coverage and analysis from the latest in professional wrestling in AEW, WWE, NWA, Impact Wrestling, or the world of entertainment. From big TV shows to your favorite sports like the NBA or NFL, all things music, movies, and beyond while trying to make sense of this crazy world we live in. All while keeping it honest, insightful, and interactive since 2011. And now your hosts, live from the nation's capital of Washington, D.C., Lee Sanders. Hey, what's going on, my pretty babies? Covering the latest in wrestling, entertainment, and beyond since 2011, you guys are checking out a new episode of the RCWR show for this Monday night of April 15th, 2024. Hopefully you guys have paid your taxes. Your taxes are due, my pretty babies. Uh, you don't want to be uh, playing around with that. Uh, hang on real quick here. I just want to adjust my audio on the slide here because I saw it was kind of peaking just a tiny little bit, and now we're good. Yeah, you don't want to be playing around with those taxes. Your taxes are due. Don't let the IRS man come after you. Hopefully, you guys were able to get it done. I always tell my friends and family, as soon as you get that W-2 from your employer, everybody usually gets them at the end of January. Worst case scenario, first week in February, definitely by the second week in February. Everybody should have gotten them by now. As soon as you get them, just do them. Just get them out the way right then and there. And then you don't have to worry about it as far as scrambling around at the last minute. I hate to be in that position where you got to pay a penalty fee and all that other crap. Nobody wanted to deal with that as soon as you get it. If you're able to, of course, knock it out right then and there. Hope you guys have had a fantastic weekend. Yo, what did you guys think about tonight's WWE Raw that came to us from Canada? You notice they didn't say that it was a sold-out crowd. Because I believe it was two, maybe three hours before Raw aired tonight. That venue where they were at, as far as tickets go, they still had about roughly 350 tickets left. You're looking at that, you're going, ah, in about less than three hours? Yeah, no way. Like, you would have been shocked if they would have been able to sell those 350 tickets. But still, the fact that they were damn near close to another sellout, Thus, the streak continuing there for WWE. Like, that would have been badass and everything. But look, just the fact that it was a near sold-out arena there was pretty solid. But yeah, what did you guys think about tonight's WWE Raw? Sound off. Let your voices be heard on X, formerly known as Twitter, or on YouTube Community Sections tab, the RCWR show. And you can cash your vote. We'll circle on back later on, see what you guys have to say. I wasn't sure if this show was going to be going down tonight because my wife had gave me a annoying code. And I told her straight up, I said, whoever gave you this, like, make sure you stay the hell away from them because brother don't need this right now. Like, seriously. And she, yeah, she feels guilty enough as it is and everything. So I mainly had been congested. I still feel a little congested, but what I'm mainly dealing with right now is voice irritation, sore throat. So I've been drinking on some tea. Uh, this is the specific tea that I like to get. It's for throat comfort. That's been helping. But I want to show you guys something else that definitely is a freaking game changer. And it's called Chloroseptic Max Sore Throat. These things, I'm going to show it to you on the screen here for my audio listeners only. Check it out at about the 4 minute, 55 second mark in your, of the video, the timestamp for the video. And you'll see me holding it up. Or you can just 
pull it up in a Bing Google search. You'll see what I'm talking about. Doctor recommended. This is great stuff right here. Now they say this tastes is, is supposed to taste like berries, strawberries, grapes, and all that wonderfulness. Nah, it don't taste like that at all. Uh, but it does soothe the heck out of the throat within seconds. It numbs it, clears it up and everything. So you guys got to forgive me in advance if you hear me doing a little bit of sucking uh, in between here on uh, on my, my little medicine over here. But it's for a worthy, worthy cause. You know, what I like the most, you picked a great time to tune in because we're going to be going all over the place. We're going to be talking about WWE Raw, of course. We also got some interesting uh, headlines that's going to be going down as well. Uh, some uh, some interesting little news development tippets uh, here and there. Uh, so you picked a good night. You definitely picked a good night to tune in and everything. I'm getting a question about uh, the medicine. Is it good for your voice? Yes, it is good for the voice as far as clearing it up taking care of any itchiness, uh, any soreness, uh, dryness. It's very good. I definitely highly recommend it because before I got this earlier today, uh, I was struggling even with the tea. My voice was sounding much worse, but I popped one of these and this came to me via Amazon probably about, oh, about three hours ago. And I popped one and I was like, you know, just kept sucking on it. And my voice was, this isn't even my voice at a hundred percent. My voice out of a hundred percent, I would say I'm 90% better right now. And, and that's with the help of these little things right here. So, and you can get these for a really good deal on Amazon. I was able to pick up two boxes of these for about $3 and 50 cent. And of course, if you're a prime member, then you know it really depends when you place the order. But in my particular case, I was able to buy this in time to have it be delivered anywhere between five in the evening to 10 o'clock at night. So I was like, oh, that works good for me because my show ain't until 11. So yeah, that gives me plenty of time. So it was good though. So thinking about tonight's WWE Raw, a lot of interesting factors was going into this episode, you all, because... As far as a, a great range of emotional context, that's something that we've been talking about here on the show off and on for many years. You always hear me say we need emotional context. And we had that here all throughout this episode tonight, which was beautifully executed. When you just really take a step back and you specifically think about it from an emotional context perspective. For starters, you have an injury that unfortunately sidelined a superstar. But then you have another superstar who was sidelined from an injury for eight months that made their triumphant return on this episode. You have two good friends that in the process of becoming friends started off as competitors, not necessarily rivals, but were competitors that are squaring off for a championship now that a common enemy that they both shared in common is now out of the equation. You have another wrestler who hell have no fury like a woman scorned is all about revenge and retribution because she hasn't forgotten about certain people that did certain things to her and she's got a receipt to cash on their behinds. I mean, you just had a little bit of everything as far as emotional context goes that was happening on this episode, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Of course, going into tonight's episode, late into the weekend, we're hearing the rumblings, and one of the first outlets that jumped out there was that I saw was PW Insider. Now, the good people over at Fightful, they might have been first, but I know eventually I, I saw them pretty much saying the same thing, but far as I'm concerned, I first saw it from PW Insider. So maybe it's a tie between those two, right? I, I don't know. I know the guys over at Fightful, they've been more than ever. They've been saying, hey, man, we want our credit. We want our props when we're breaking news, whenever anybody else is aggregating 
Uh, is that the word? Our news. We, we want to make sure we're getting proper credit and all that. And it's, yeah, I hear where they're coming from. I totally dig that. I respect the hell out of that. I really, really do. And I think for, for our part here on the show, we do a fantastic job of whatever news information comes about. We do a good job in giving credit where it's due, especially if we're reading highlights from a podcast that a wrestler or celebrity has done. We give the credit where the credit is due. Only time you don't hear me mention the credit is when I think something was just poorly disorganized when it's all said and done. But rumblings coming from the tail end of the weekend going into tonight, we hear about Rhea Ripley, point that some of you all had touched upon. And you're going, what exactly is going on? With Rhea Ripley here, maybe this is just some part of a story arc or, or, or something. This has to be an angle, maybe. And if you notice, if you're following me on social media, I did not say anything because I've learned as I've gotten older and, and for as long as I've been involved in the podcasting game and all that, I have learned that, you know what, it pays to not be so reactionary every single time. Because things have a funny way of gotcha blowing up in your face, right? So for me, I didn't put any response out there in regards to this rumor. My whole thing was, and I always try to tell you guys, let's wait and see what happens. Wait and see approach. That's the best thing to do. But I did have in the back of my mind, if this is true, wow, wow, this is, this is kind of bad. If it's true, and then sure enough, we kick off Raw with Rhea Ripley coming out in a sling. And I got to be honest with you guys. I don't know how many of you all out there were thinking the same way, but I'm looking at that right arm of hers in a sling, and I'm going, well, you know what? This could still potentially just be playing up to what was said online. This could be a gotcha moment. Maybe this is a way to kind of bait Liv Morgan in there. And there was a part of me that was, hang on, let's not just yet. Let's wait and see. Just wait. Let's see what the woman has to say. And Rhea Ripley revealed that allegedly because of her brawl with Liv Morgan last week, backstage area, one thing led into another and she's injured. She's going to be out for several months, apparently. And as a result of that, she relinquished the women's championship, the Raw Women's Championship, as I like to refer to it. And what a big striking blow that was. Kudos to WWE for the way this segment was handled. And I say that for this respected reason. As unfortunate as that news was, you're automatically going as a fan. So what does this mean for the championship going forward? What does this mean? And I liked how WWE handled that because it was essentially an, an incentive for you to stick around to find out what the future of that championship was going to be. We'll talk more about that championship and all that in, in a hot little bit. But unfortunate news, and this isn't me sounding like a dick. This is me being very consistent, okay? I know you guys appreciate consistency. Although sometimes two things can be said that's true. Remember, I said it last week, week before. I've been saying it off and on for the past several weeks. I've even said it as recent as the WrestleMania post shows, which was, hey, Great that Rhea Ripley had a successful title defense. I said she had a great performance at Mania against Becky Lynch. But WWE is in a bit of a pickle now because they got to try to figure out, all right, you've run the gambit of having Rhea Ripley go through every single woman that's on the roster. So unless you got some plans with her for the draft, maybe you're going to send her to the other show. Potentially, potentially. You got yourself in this backed up position now where you haven't really built up another person in such a way where if something happens to Rhea Ripley, okay, well, it's all good because we, we got this going on over here. And so my whole argument, my whole concern, if you guys recall, was, yo, they're putting Rhea in this position here where she is just 
the king of the mountain and like like who who else is going to unless you go on ahead and you put a Tiffany Stratton or Jay Cargill on the same brand as Rhea Ripley, right? It, it's one of those things where you're just kind of going, mm, not looking good whatsoever. If you see me messing around, I'm just trying to take this, just trying to take this uh, medicine out of my mouth here for a hot minute. So that's the dilemma that we got going on. So this injury, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. But at the same time, this gives women on the roster an opportunity to step up now more than ever. This shakes things up a little bit ahead of the draft when you really stop and you think about it, right? So it's a negative. It, it really is. But at the same time, it's also an opportunity. I can only imagine the amount of people that have been very vocal. And I would imagine that there is a core audience that has the same issues of what I just described with the Rhea Ripley title reign. Okay, great. You know, we've put all these challengers ahead of her. She's knocked them all down. But in the process, who have we really built up? We really haven't built up anybody in the process. Okay, well, now we've got her away for a handful of months. Now we get to see a scenario go down where who's going to step up and seize that opportunity and everything. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, Liv Morgan. I know I'm going to upset some Liv Morgan fans. I've got, for some weird reason, a few Liv Morgan fan pages that's following me on social media, and I'm going, it must be just the WWE connection thing because, like, I I've never been 100% yay Liv, right? By the way, that segment where they had Liv Morgan come out and security's trying to hold her back and Rhea Ripley's going, no, let her, let her. I I'm supposed to believe that Liv Morgan is, and I don't, I want to make sure I'm choosing my words carefully, but I'm just going to throw it out there because it's what I'm thinking, right? It's what I'm thinking. You're telling me that the security detail that is surrounding Liv Morgan can't do a better job of securing her as opposed to the guards that were in charge of surrounding, guarding Rhea Ripley from getting her hands on Liv Morgan. I mean, it was like night and day if you really stop and think about it, okay? Really night and day. I would have preferred it if we would have seen referees come out there on Liv Morgan. I mean, hell, at, at least let's see some type of great restraining going on the part of Liv Morgan for me personally. I, I just found that to be comical to no end, right? By the way, the headbutt that Rhea Ripley gave to one of the security guards there, that was badass. I mean, she headbutted that mofo right in the chest. I'm just going, it just seemed like a one of those Mortal Kombat moves. Finish him. And you just, right? And the bones are just cracking and all over the place. But I am supposed to believe that Liv Morgan, you know, is now this this threat that now she, it just, no, no, no. I'm supposed to take Liv Morgan as legit. Now I am legitimately, I'm asking this question to you. All. Are we all WWE supposed to take Liv Morgan as a serious threat in the women's division? Let me take it a step further. Are we really led to believe that Liv Morgan is supposed to be a threat in the women's division to the point that we could potentially be looking at the next Raw Women's Champion? Man, I have tried for years. And look, Liv Morgan, she's got a cute face. I know that she's got the whole weird thing going on with the lollipop tongue that people likes and, and all that other stuff. But there's nothing really memorable about her in the ring that I haven't seen nine out of 10 times in a week from another female in some other wrestling promotion. There's really nothing that stands out to me. So for me, I'm already looking past Liv Morgan and asking the real question, which is, so who is potentially going to be the face for the women's division 
on the raw side of things well past the WWE draft after the fact, right? And if everything holds up where it needs to hold up right now, really stop and think about it. We've got now this is a this is a long shot. I want to get my long shot out of the way right now. But Shayna Baszler, we know how much of a big fan Triple H is of Shayna Baszler. If he wanted to go back to basics, true basics with Shayna Baszler back when she was down there in NXT, um, or he could even bring back the Shayna Baszler that was just going around choking out, okay? She was choking out. If she wasn't doing that, she was making tap out, okay? So he could either go back to that, that era of Shayna Baszler as well. But that's my dark horse that could be your next women's champion. The obvious names, of course, assuming they hold up well past the draft, Nia Jax, which I thought it was a great nod that we had saw the cameo from Nia Jax being interviewed later on in the night, giving her thoughts on everything that went down. And she's pretty much like, I could care less about either one. Like the name of the di- name of the game right now is Nia Jax. You need to fear Nia Jax. And if you ain't fearing Nia Jax, then you definitely need to be aware of the possibility that you will be fearing Nia Jax. Right? So I, I like how she had spun that. So that was a, a nice little nod right there taste of potentially things to come of course we've got becky lynch you still gotta throw her into the mix as well right so you got that now some of you guys may say well i don't really care about Shayna baszler lee so we got to put that name to the side okay yeah leon i hear you on becky lynch i hear you on nia Jax, but Beyond that, Lee, we ain't really got nothing going on here. So what else we got? So it really could be a case where, unfortunately, whether some of us like it or not, Liv Morgan just may have to be thrown uh, in there, unfortunately. But uh, as far as what's going to happen next week, your guess is as good as mine. I'm hope anybody else other than Liv Morgan, I'm totally because it's just not believable. It's just that. And I like the fact that they had Nia Jax say, yo, Liv Morgan and her little revenge tour. Last time I went up against her, right? Hey, last time I went up against Becky Lynch, right? Hey, last time I went up against Rhea Ripley, right? She's pretty much going, yo, that championship, it will be mine. And you know what? That's my pick for next week. Now, for those of you that's a little bit curious how they're going to be addressing the championship, no exact details are known right now. We don't know if they're doing some type of a a tournament, if you will, an eliminator tournament throughout the night, and the final two participants are going to be facing one another. The only thing that we know right now is, based on what was promoted for next week, there will be a new Raw Women's Champion crowned. That is official. There will be a new Raw Women's Champion crowned next week. So I'm putting all my chips to the table. I'm pushing them away. I'm going to say Nia Jax. Who you all got for next week? Sound off. Let me know. So interesting development that was happening there as far as uh, the Raw Women's Championship goes and everything. Uh, You know, it just really makes you think after the fact, seeing how everything had played up. I I can't help. I don't know about you all, but I can't help but say, man, was it really a wise decision on WWE's part? to put Jade Cargill and Tiffany Stratton on the blue brand. Was it really smart for them? Because, man, if you just would have moved Tiffany Stratton over to Raw and you would have done a really solid job in building her up, giving her a couple of Ws, especially with some reputable names, then she potentially could be thrown into the mix right now I mean, that girl was phenomenal as the NXT Women's Champion. I I loved her work. I loved her work before she became champion. I loved her work even more after she became champion. If there's anybody, I'm going, yo, this kid is definitely in the right place at the right time, can definitely 
follow along with the current trends and everything, right? Uh, as far as pop culture goes and all that, here's your girl right here. She can also get down and dirty. I, I just feel if they would have put her on Raw initially, then we would be in a much, it'd be a, a more entertaining conversation, I think, right now, as far as what potentially could be happening with that women's uh, championship here. But it's a bad spot for WWE to be in with Rhea Ripley. I would imagine not how they saw this championship reign coming to an end. And, and look, uh, I saw an interesting stat that was shared. I don't know if it was by the WWE stat people or one of those fan made accounts, but they said something along the lines of uh, Rhea Ripley's title reign lasted just one day longer than Bailey's for Rhea Ripley to clinch the all time record. You're going, man, that is freaking badass, right? So, but look, we know that Rhea Ripley, she's going to come back bigger, badder, meaner than ever. Rhea Ripley definitely a speedy recovery, uh, just the most crappiest news, honestly, most crappiest news uh, to start the week. It's very unfortunate. But as they say, the show uh, must go on, right? I'm sure that as the week progresses, we'll learn a lot more about exactly what type of injury she sustained, uh, you know, uh, how severe the injury is, because that'll give us a better timetable to discuss as fans. And even for those of us that follow science and medicine, that'll give us a, you know, a really good talking point to speculate as far as, okay, so what are we realistically looking at here? You know, from everything that we've seen from our favorite sports and all that, you know, okay, so the severity of this injury, how long are we talking, right? I would imagine as the week progresses, if not this week, definitely next week, we should learn a lot more and be able to go into the weeds of that. So we have one person sidelined with an injury, but we had a return of a superstar from injury. The Celtic warrior himself, Fella Seamus, making his triumphant return after eight months on the sidelines. The 46-year-old Celtic warrior not only making his triumphant return tonight, but he was able to come back to his old theme song. Uh, I had the name of the song. Uh, I, I can't picture the name. Somebody will probably type it in the chat, and that's cool, but not the theme song that he was pushing for like the last handful of years. I'm talking about old school Sheamus when Sheamus first became the WWE champion. Uh, was it the whites in their eyes, whites in their faces, some type of title like that. But uh, yeah, he was pushing that old school. It was a Jim Johnson song. That much I know for sure. You're going, whoa. And that's when it dawned on me that, yeah, Sheamus said in an interview, that he hoped he could bring that song back somehow because he really liked that song. Well, the big fella got his wish. He was in in-ring action, the four-time WWE champion taking on Ivar. Yo, I freaking love that match. As Wade Barrett and them, like to say Booker T and them, two big beefy men just... Man, that was just meat slapped in upon meat at its finest. I could have watched Sheamus and Ivar all freaking day. I would love to see those two guys run it back. And hell, right down to the point, I actually wouldn't mind seeing the two of them maybe eventually form a tag team. There's an interesting idea right there, right? I mean, I know as far as the Viking Warriors go, right? But man... I think Sheamus and Ivar, I think WWE stumbled upon something here that definitely warrants more exploring with these two guys. So hopefully they'll consider that. But I love this match uh, between these two. This was good. Sheamus looking better than ever. Uh, and I got to tell you guys, especially if you are one of those type of fans who later years in the later part of Seamus career, you really started appreciating his work. I cannot stress this enough. 
Appreciate the man in the here and the now because 46 years old, and if you've really been on top of your wrestling, particularly with Sheamus, you know about the long history of injuries that this man has sustained. And, you know, you, you just you go back, you play some of those injuries in your mind, you're going, man, I just don't see how this guy could come back from hell if this guy calls it a day. Well, hey, it was good while it lasted. And we could be looking at one last hoorah and Seamus. I know that he said he feels great and, and, and that's, that's what we want, right? We want the very best for him and everything, right? But father time is undefeated for a reason, okay? Now, look, the Seamus that I saw tonight, I'm not going to lie to you guys. If that Seamus can continue to stay healthy, and no serious sideline injuries, I'm knocking on wood, this Sheamus might be able to go another, and I'm being realistic with myself, this Sheamus might be able to go another two years. Three is really, really pushing it, I personally feel. But with what we have in advanced science, medicine, nutrition, rehabbing, anything is possible, but I'd be shocked if four years from now, Seamus is still going at it. I really, really would be shocked. So my message to you guys, appreciate the man and his work while he's here right now. And we got a little taste of a preview, if you will, of potentially what might be in the future for Seamus. I don't know if you guys had noticed it for those of you that had watched Raw, but the commentators were very quick to point out that of all the championships that Sheamus has won in his illustrious career, there's one championship that has continued to elude him, which is the Intercontinental Championship. And to that, you just got to do a double take and you go, wait, what? Say, what? Well, all these years Sheamus hasn't, are we sure about that? And you're like, yeah, he definitely has won the United States Championship. That was a nice memorable run. I definitely remember that, but no, he has never won the Intercontinental Championship. So, uh, you know, they're giving you a little bit of breadcrumbs as far as a taste of things to come, and I'm definitely uh, okay with that. Our world team, our world tag team champions is what I was trying to say. Forgive me there. In Awesome Truth, they were presented with new tag title designs by the COO Triple H. I'm never going to call him... I, well, I don't mind calling him Paul Levesque, Triple H, or Triple Paul Levesque, Paul Levesque H, or Paul Levesque Triple H, right? I, I don't mind, but I think where you got to draw the line is you, know, you just got to make sure that you don't call somebody, especially when you don't know them, you got to make sure you catch yourself and you don't call them by their first name because that's the ultimate sign of disrespect. Anybody that has taken a writing class knows this they you, they teach you to not refer to the person by their first name because the first question that your teacher or professor is going to ask you is oh you personally know this person and when you say no like well okay then then you have to refer to them by their whole name or mr or mrs and then the last name right you know or the coo of wwe right you got to do it like that but Triple H was out there to present Awesome Truth with some new title designs. Thank God almighty for the wrestling gods in heaven. We finally have new tag title designs because the copper joints, them joints was, they've been played out. Been tired of those for a good, good minute. Now, every time I looked at them, they was just hurting the hell out of my eyes. We're done with those. The new titles that they have, I mean, I wish I get it because WWE, they got to make sure that the design is in such a way where, oh, yeah, that's a WWE championship. Like they're not doing too radical of a design where you got to think about which promotion that's coming from. For example, when you look at the Intercontinental Championship or you look at some of the titles from NXT UK, these new tag titles are pretty much in line 
with those designs per se, except they just got this, it seems like a funky looking wooden plaque with the title world tag team titles, right? And they're now being referred to as the world tag team championships. Okay, cool. We had from there got a triple threat number one contenders match to find out who would take on Awesome Truth for those tag titles. I believe that's going to be going down at WWE Backlash in about less than three weeks. DIY picked up the win against the Creed Brothers and New Day again in a triple threat number one contender match. So DIY taking on Awesome Truth. I'm all right with that. I mean, that should be a fun tag match. Either way, I'm down with that. The Creed Brothers throw, man. Those Creed Brothers are really, really growing on me big time. And they're definitely going to have their moment in the sun. Can I just go... Can I just go Negro Damas for a second here, right? Can I just... I just got this weird... Oh, my God. Like, picture this. Close your eyes and just picture this. What if... What if Chad Gable were to form some type of a new faction with the Creed Brothers? Wow, I think that would make some heads turn, wouldn't it? That's a nice way of spicing things up a little bit, especially considering how things ended with tonight's Monday Night Raw, which some of you guys had alluded to in the chat earlier there. Something to think about. We'll circle back to, to Chad Gable Connect the dots for you guys a little bit more in a hot second. Uh, so look, this first little bit, we are on a good roll, right? We're on a good roll. Then we get hit with a little bit of a doozy for my personal taste, which was Ivy Now and Maxine Dupree taking on Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae. A little bit of a repeat from what we've been seeing these past couple of weeks and everything and and look you could tell me tell your blue in the face that hey this person has been busting their behind they've been working house shows they've been at the performance center they've been you know i'm still not quite invested in this particular story arc i'm still not at that point as a fan where i am feeling sympathetic towards however Candice LeRae wants to treat Maxine Dupree. I damn sure I'm not feeling that way towards Indy Hartwell. It, it's just, it's, it's not working. It's not working for me. It, you know, it's interesting because sometimes I got to catch myself in, and in, in a good way. I mean, not that I'm getting ready to say something bad, but sometimes just I have to catch myself and I have to remember how long I've been looking at some of these men and women that are now in the WWE because I remember seeing some of these people on the independents and how they were just tearing it up left and right. And how many fans out there? I'll admit I definitely was out there at times where I'm going, Oh man, just imagine if they were in the WWE. Oh man. Or Hey, just imagine if they were in TNA or man, just imagine if they were in, you know, and then once they get there, it's just, well, wait a minute. This isn't matching up to what I thought it was going to be. How I thought it was going to be. Wait, wait a minute. What's going on here? And, you know, Candice LeRae is definitely a good example of that. I'm not saying that as a diss. I'm not saying that as as a negative but as far as playing up to your truest potential, right? Like it still feels that with Candice LeRae and for as long as she's been involved with WWE, it just feels like she's hit a ceiling. I'm just telling you how it feels. Now, maybe that's not the case when we really look at it. I'm just telling you how I personally feel. You all may feel differently, but for me... It just feels like she has reached a, a, a certain ceiling. And I, I guess she's okay with that, right? Hey, the priorities, the kid, and right? But for me, I'm, I'm just looking at this and, and I'm just going, nah, man, let's do something else. Like, let's really shake this up. We don't need Indy Hartwell 
involved. Like Indy Hartwell, just look at her. Just seriously, just look at Indy Hartwell. Great genetics, fantastic in the ring. What are we doing having her involved in a mundane story arc? I got to also look at Maxine Dupree. Now, some of you guys may say, all right, Lee, well, if you can have it your way, how would you really do a better job in getting Maxine Dupree over uh, as a sympathetic baby face, have the fans really root for her and all that, really root for Indy Hartwell? Simple. Replace Candice LeRae, throw into the mix a Tamina Snuka. Hell, throw in a Nia Jax. Hell, throw in a Shayna Baszler. You could even sprinkle in there a Piper Nevin if you wanted to. That is... That's going to relate more to the audience, especially if for what you have in mind, you're trying to figure out how to better elevate Indy Hartwell and or uh, Maxine Dupree. then that's the route that you really should be going. Like Candice LeRae hasn't done barely enough as part of the main roster to have fans go, yeah, man, that's that dog. That's that dog. God, watch out for her, man. Yeah, right? It's like, no. No. No, come again. Seriously, come again. So that's where I stand on that one. Now, we had a little bit of a redeeming match. If you uh, flipped your channels and didn't watch that women's tag match, well, if you came back a little while later, you got yourself a nice dose of Dominic Mysterio taking on Andrade. Chef's kiss. I loved it. I loved it. That was badass. Andrade is just really finding his groove since he's been back in WWE. He's been having some really solid ass matches. I love this whole intertwining with the Judgment Day, right? Because all things considered, Andrade was supposed to be a fixer, if you will, for the Judgment Day. He was on his way to maybe becoming an honorary member. And we see how soon that backfired and everything. Uh, so I, I like that we've been continuing this uh, going on and everything. This was, of all the matches for the night, besides the main event with Chad Gable, Sami Zayn, I thoroughly had enjoyed Dominic Mysterio and Andrade. Say what you will about Dominic Mysterio, but make no mistake about it, man. When that guy gets in that ring, particularly those one-on-one -on -one matches, that guy shines big time. And this was an instant classic for me right down to the point. Uh, I think I might end up watching this match again. That's how much I had enjoyed it for uh, what it was worth. I know post-match, uh, we had saw J.D. McDonough get a surprise attack in there on Andrade as Dom and J.D. were beating the crap out of Andrade when Ricochet came out to balance out the odds. And I believe as a result of that next week, we're going to be seeing a tag match involved with all four of those guys. So, Hey, good stuff. Good stuff. I'm looking forward to that. That should be one hell of a fire uh, tag team match. So should be good. Should be good. Uh, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else in addition. I want to say in regards to uh, Dominic Mysterio and uh, Andrade, honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more. If I had one gripe in regards to that match, I wish it would have lasted a little bit longer. I feel with a commercial break that was sandwiched in there, we got a little bit shortchanged. So this match definitely could have really taken a solid advantage of going you know, 13 minutes, give or take. And I think fans would have been okay with it, honestly. But for the little bit that we had saw, it was all right. Piper Nevin, Chelsea Green taking on Caden Carter, Katana Chance, Nevin and Green picking up the win. Ah, very, very short of a match. I don't know what they were trying to target right here. Uh, I did look try to look at it from a story arc angle, though, because the commentators did say that Chelsea Green told Adam Pierce, hey, make sure you put us as part of the draft coming up because we want out. We want to be gone from Monday Night Raw. So we'll see how that plays out for them. Cody Rhodes was in the house, basically giving flowers to Seth Rollins, giving them props for being his shield and everything. Letting the audience know, too, that technically 
he's a SmackDown guy, but it doesn't matter to him because he's pretty much going to show up wherever, whenever, right? Because that's what a champion does. He also takes time out to give props to The Rock. But, you know, you're giving these props and we're supposed to just magically forget what Rock had said to you last week when you were in the ring with him. Most importantly, what was it that was put in the hand? Right? What did Rock put in Cody Rhodes' hand? A lot of you guys like the idea of it had to have been the Rolex. Maybe he somehow got a hold of the Rolex. We'll have to wait and see, right? But uh, I was going to talk about it much later on, too. But since Cody brought up The Rock, it's a good segue. Rock put out a video. I know some of us were wondering what was going on with his physical status after WrestleMania. I know definitely I had that on my brain because I remember what happened the last time he wrestled as, uh, unfortunately, he got injured. And that had put the production for the next movie he was working on on hold until he could fully recover. And that's 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 the last thing you want as a Hollywood actor. Okay, that's the last thing you want. But Rock had gave out this. uh, He put out this video on social media basically saying that he's banged up, but no injuries whatsoever. Just the usual banged up soreness that comes from wrestling especially as long as he did and and the fact that he wrestled like almost 45 minutes I'm going wow yeah you did actually holy right like that's pretty good for 51 going on 52 and you're just sore like my man you're blessed like seriously you're blessed but the other thing that was pretty revealing was hearing him talk about how Uh, He had not one training camp, not two training camps, but he had three training camps throughout the U.S. Uh, I think he had one out in Florida. Don't quote me on the other two. I would actually need help from you guys to give me the other two locations. But he was bringing in all different types of athletes, trainers. I mean, he was bossing his ass. And as I had mentioned on the post show, Hey, look, what I saw with The Rock, this is the absolute best. Not just physically that he looks, but as far as the in-ring conditioning, what I saw of him in the ring as well. I said, look, this is the best Rock I've seen since since last he was in the WWE as a part-timer. Like this guy, you know, slash full-timer, right? I mean, he tapped back into that. And to Cody's point tonight, saying, yo... One more match? Nah, you got a lot of matches left. And I'm not in my head going, exactly, exactly. It'd be nice, right? It'd be nice if we could see a lot more uh, of The Rock. And maybe we will, right? The story arc's just got to be right. Everything just has to make sense. Most importantly, he's got to have the availability, obviously. But uh, great video. Go check it out. It's like about four minutes long. I usually check out some of the stuff that The Rock posts. I know there was a really cool video he shared for his cheat day meal, blueberry pancakes, and he was just dumping a whole bunch of granola on that bad boy. And I'm just looking at that. I'm going, yo, that looks pretty damn delicious. I'm going, I I just might have to try that myself. Like, I like blueberry pancakes, but I've never done blueberry pancakes with some type of uh, granola on it, and then just drowning it in the syrup. I've never done that before, so like I, I definitely got to try that. But yeah, Cody giving the props to the Rock and everything. Also uh, letting the Rock done, letting the Rock know that yeah, you know you might have made me bleed, but I made you bleed with me. So pretty much letting him know anytime, any place, like he's ready to do the damn thing. Calls out Jey Uso, lets Jey Uso know he appreciated everything. Sticking up for him, WrestleMania weekend. Wanted to return the same gesture, have his back tonight as Jey Uso uh, was going to be having a match against, uh, who was that? Jey Uso was going to be having a match against Finn Balor. But Jey saying, nah, you know, I'm I'm honestly good. Appreciate the love though, but no, I got it from here. So that was a nice little cool moment. Jay Uso taking on Finn Balor. Commercial break. 
really messed with this match. At least the second half of this match, I would have to say. Uh, it's kind of hard because like when you're into a match like this one, and then you got the commercial break that comes in there, and then you come back, and then there's only a couple of minutes left. You're like, <sighs> right? So you try your best not to factor in that commercial break, but you can't help but because this match was definitely, I felt on the verge of becoming an instant classic. But with the commercial break and the length of time that these two men were in the ring for, just the totality of that kind of made it hurt. Because this match only, I'd be shocked if this match even went 10 minutes. I think it was less than that. I wouldn't be surprised if it was actually seven minutes. I wanted to see a lot more from these two for what it was worth. Um, I know Damian Priest had came out there staring Jay Uso down. Enters the ring, goes toe-to-toe with Jay. Finn Balor, he's watching from the mat. JD ends up attacking from behind. Uh, Dominic comes from out of nowhere. Finn gets in the face of Priest, yell at him. All that stuff continues and everything. Um, JD chases him down. Jason, JD, and the Finn. And then he just leaves up the stairs, goes through the crowd, and you're going, well, what's going on here? And he's staring down Priest as he just rolls out, and you're going, where the hell is Jay going? Is he getting ready to go get, I don't know, a golf cart to maybe run these guys over or something? Like, is he getting a machete? Where is he going exactly? And he just runs into Sami Zayn, who's staring up at the sky. Weird transition, I got to say. That was a really weird transition on WWE's part. That was the first time, like, from just the whole production, just the way everything was laid out. I'm looking and I'm going. Really, really bad transition. Couldn't you just have him bump into him as he was coming out of his locker room or something? It was just really weird. Intercontinental Championship match. By the way, Sami Zayn, what was Sami Zayn looking at? Uh, Sami Zayn... Talked about how it was over 25 years ago that the first show he ever saw in his life was at that very building that WWE is at tonight. And now here he is in the main event match for the Intercontinental Championship. It's kind of funny how things come full circle. I see match Sami Zayn taking on Chad Gable. Banger, 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 banger. Love this. Great main event match. The highlight of the night. By far, through and through, best damn match of the entire episode this week. They made sure this match got plenty of time. This one almost went 20 minutes. So that is some nice breathing room. I love this. I love this. Chad Gable, man. He is really... I'm going to jump out there and I'm going to say it. He is really... Becoming for me the Shawn Michaels of the WWE, the Kurt Angle of the WWE, meaning you put him with anybody and he's going to make them freaking shine. You know, it's one of those like if Chad Gable can't get you over, you can forget about it then. Like, seriously, right? You know, so I, I love this. This was a fine match. Sami Zayn going over, retaining the championship. Um, you know, one thing that was really, really scary, though, how about that German suplex that Sami hit on uh, on uh, Chad? That, man, oh, the way Chad Gable landed, you're going... And then when they showed the replay, you're like, uh, I remember at this point, my wife was watching. And she's like, man, I hope he's okay. That looked really, really bad from the angle they showed. I said, yeah. I was like, I'm I'm hoping he's okay. We'll know in the next little bit. And sure enough, it kind of seemed like maybe he had cobwebs for a little bit, but you know, for a hot, hot, hot minute, but was able to shake it off really, really quick. I'm sure he'll really really be feeling that the next day when he wakes up, but you just look and you just go, number one, thank God you got a big head. Number two, and that's not a joke. I'm, I'm being serious. Number one, thank God you got a big head. Number two, hey, you got a thick neck because your average person, they, they going to be laying there for a minute. <laughs> Seriously, they're going to be laying there on the canvas for a bit. 
Uh, I love all the emotion that was playing out throughout this match, uh, especially with Sami Zayn's wife being in attendance. That was a nice touch as well. Sami trying to be a professional post-match, being a sport to Chad Gable. Hey, that a boy next time, right? You know, hey, you're you're damn good. And, and Chad's like, nah, you're the man. Chad rolling out, trying to let Sammy have his moment. Sammy going over to his wife, embracing her. And then Chad Gable just coming from out of nowhere with a German right in front of freaking Sammy Zayn's wife. And then he ends up sending him into the ring post, beating him the holy hell down, slapping on that ankle lock on him as Sammy is screaming. This is all happening right in the wife's face. Chef's kiss. I love it. I love it. It doesn't get any better than that. I love it. I love it. Uh, so, you know, we're building some really nice, interesting blocks as far as this new era, if you will, of the WWE, this new direction for the company as a whole. But as far as building things up towards that next PLE, which is Backlash, WWE setting up some pretty interesting foundation here. You know, it felt like a little bit of a cool down, obviously from the Raw After Mania edition, but you still had some really, really good parts uh, in here. The commercial breaks, bad timing for, for some of the matches that you're looking at going on paper. Yeah, this is going to be good. And then the placement of these ads are like, Ugh. The annoying men's warehouse ad, I don't know how it was for you guys in North America, but I know for here on the East Coast, just every time you turn around, Michael Cole with the men's warehouse reads, okay, you you, you got to get that money. I get it. But when they were actually taking commercial breaks, for me, I kept getting Mountain Dew, Baja Blast, and the girl from the office is, I can blast anywhere. I can blast off anywhere, and I'm just... I'm giggling as a little kid, like Beavis and Butthead, every time I'm, I'm seeing this. If I wasn't getting that, I was getting the Buffalo Wild Wing commercial. If I wasn't getting the Buffalo Wild Wing commercial, I think I was getting the Wendy's commercial as they're promoting the new Cinnabon. Uh, so, yeah, I was getting, like, the most annoying commercials guaranteed every single... I mean, it's a nice change of pace. It beats having the black chick from SNL... Uh, from the Pizza Hut commercials, I'm bougie, you know. I like I'm I'm seven dollars bougie. I'm bougie with Pizza Hut. Like it, it was better than getting that because I know I was about ready to freaking shoot my damn television set just seeing that every single commercial break. But main event was really where the money is uh, for this week. So kind of curious what's going to happen with Cody Rhodes going forward especially now that he said technically he's a smackdown guy i was like okay so is that it we've seen the last of cody or is cody gonna continue to right because eventually that's gonna intertwine there with damian priest and you don't really want to disrespect damian priest who's your world champion for the raw side of things right so kind of curious how all of that uh is going to play out but a, a pretty solid episode uh, when it's all said and done, I would have to say to the polls we go. Now let's see what you all had to say. Let's go over to X formerly known as Twitter at the RCWR show. Let's see what you guys had to say. Shout out to those that's watching via X. I'm hanging in there, man. I am hanging in there. Uh, throats throats doing pretty decent. 5% of you said average show. 11% of you said terrible show. 29% of you felt it was a good show. Coming in top dog with 55. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. With now 55% of the votes. Uh, awesome show. Appreciate you guys that voted via X. Let's see what you guys had to say via YouTube. YouTube.com forward slash the RCWR show. Click on the communities tab and you guys can vote that way. See what you guys are saying over there. 16% of you, good show. 
27% of you felt it was an average show. And Top Dog, 57% of the votes right now. Uh, you guys are saying it was an awesome show. Appreciate you guys that casted your votes. Uh, continue letting your voices be heard without a doubt. Right. Love what we got going on here. Uh, Muhammad, I hope it doesn't have methadone in it. He is referring to the sore throat drops that I was plugging earlier. Well, if you bear with me, I can tell you real quick as far as ingredients go. No. And you can usually taste it. Like, I know the taste that you're talking about. Uh, usually you could taste that. I didn't taste that, but I'm reading the ingredients anyway. And for the record, it's not in it. Uh, I'm seeing corn syrup, FD and C blue, number one, FD and C red, number 40, glycerin, natural and artificial flavors. Uh, yeah, a little bit of water is in there. Yeah, so it's good. But you can always, you know, go on Amazon or uh, just do a being Google search, and you could do the uh, the gambit of just seeing what everybody is saying, you know, and, and, and all of that before you fully commit to it. You could definitely do it that way. All right, so let's get to some more topics we could get into here on uh, on the show here. You know, we were talking about injuries and all that earlier. Biggie, I don't know how many of you guys had saw this from over the weekend. But he gave an update in regards to uh, his neck and everything. He kept it short and sweet. He said, hey, y'all, two-year neck scans are in. Things are unchanged. My C1 has healed fibrously but has not formed new bone. I'm not medically cleared, and truthfully, I may never be cleared. But I am blessed to be pain. Uh, I am blessed to be free of pain immensely happy and otherwise healthy life is good. First of all, I got to give mad respect to Big E from this standpoint. This is the way you handle giving a update on your health and your status as an athlete, performer, entertainer. This is the correct way to do it. And what I mean by that is, and I'm sure you sports fanatic fans, you can relate to this. Too many times we have seen a athlete that is essentially a diva. They've got to get some type of headlines. They got to make it be all about them. And when you have a really big, important game that's about to go down, maybe it's a Super Bowl. Maybe the playoffs are about to start. Or maybe we're about to go into the NBA finals, right? Maybe we're going to go in the, the NHL playoffs. Now you got that prima donna diva that's got to hog the spotlight. They got to make it be about them. And, and the league's basically, right, the division, they, they got to talk about them when the focus should really be on. So I appreciate the fact that Big E, held the news off. First of all, if the news had came any sooner for Big E, like if it was right in the middle of WrestleMania time, Big E just strikes me as that type of cat that, nah, man, I'm not going to. And I would imagine he kept getting those questions. And he was trying to be respectful about it in such a way where he wasn't overshadowing WrestleMania weekend because got to make sure that the spotlight is on those men and women that's going to be performing, but also at the same time recognizes that a lot of people, they just want to know, how's he doing? What's going on and everything. So I appreciate the timing of putting out this health update because, okay, WrestleMania season, now it's all said and done. We're going to the first PLE after the fact, right? That's good. The timing, and it's just great. I love it. I love it. He timed it perfectly. Second of all, it sucks to hear this. It really does. But you know what, man? Me as a fan of Big E's, I'm just going, brother, when it's all said and done at the end of the day, you're still able to walk on your own two feet without a cane, without a wheelchair, without a person holding you, without any type of assistance. 
And I just go, man, this could have been so much worse if it wasn't for that great upper body strength, the size and everything that he possessed at the time when that freakish accident went down. This could have been a completely different conversation. Big E could have been in as bad of a physical state as the late R&B singer Teddy Pendergrass. Shout out if you if you know your singers and you know the history. It could have been one of those type of situations or a, a Christopher Reeve, Superman, right? For for more you know, mainstream value. You know, everybody knows what happened with him and, and his condition. This could have been much worse. So the fact that he ultimately was able to walk away and if the worst thing that can come from that is, well, you're never going to be able to wrestle again. I mean, you know what? That's unfortunate, but it might not make up for being in that ring. But man, just the knowledge that this man possesses of telling a great in-ring story what that mind of his possesses as far as what does it take to cut a really good promo? What does it take to build a better rapport connection with your audience, with that microphone, the coaching, just the wealth of knowledge that that man has. I would like to believe that a lot sooner rather than later, there's probably going to be that talk with Big E from Triple H in them, I would not be surprised to hear about him being a coach. I could even see a producer, but I, I, I see him more as a coach, really paying it forward to the next generation of wrestlers coming up. And whether or not that's something he would be interested in embarking in, I, I would like to see somebody actually ask that question uh, to him. You know, because uh, I don't see him in a position where he would just, you know, shoot that down. I know everybody is going, hey, color commentating, color commentating, color commentating. And yes, he would be definitely good at color commentating. But here's my question. Where do you put him? You're not going to put him with Michael Cole and Pat McAfee. They're fine just as they are. Are you going to make it be a three man booth? With SmackDown, are you going to sandwich him in between Corey Graves and Wade Barrett? Or are you bumping somebody? And if you're bumping somebody, who are you bumping? Nine times out of ten, Corey Graves is staying right where he is. So does this mean we're getting rid of Wade? And then if you are essentially going to get rid of Wade, where are you going to put Wade? You see what I'm talking about? Like, I, I think... You know, that would just be a really bad pickle. And, and Big E, to me, comes off as the type of person that doesn't want to go into a position if somebody's getting the bump. He he just he doesn't come off to me like that. He comes off too respectable, too nice of a guy that would allow something like that to happen, right? So I, I kind of feel like maybe more so coaching uh, is where he's probably going to end up being. But, of course, that's just me speculating. And there's nothing wrong with speculating, folks. So as long as you let it be known that what you're doing is speculating, just throwing ideas out there and everything. But most people aren't, aren't able to walk away from something like that totally unscathed. Seriously. I mean, this really, really could have been a very bad accident. So the fact that he's happy and life is good, right? And what more could you want except, hey, all, all all one wants for you is to be happy, right? And if he's got that and he's at peace, then it's kind of like, you know what? Cool, cool. That is what's up. That is what's up. Little bit of uh, Becky Lynch, by the way. I don't know how everybody worked themselves up uh, to be in this position, but <laughs> I guess everybody kept assuming that Becky Lynch was going to be taking time off. I did hear this rumbling and I'm going, what? Like, you know, I kind of remember saying, man, 
my exact words, I remember saying, man, she just looks so burned out. I wish she would just take some time off. That was my wishful thinking. Yeah, I just wish she would take a little bit of time off, just rest up a little bit. She looks pretty worn out. But somehow, hey, I wish she would, somehow it turned into people saying she's taking time off. I'd like to know where that thought process came from because I never saw anything like that out uh, on the wrestling news circuit. I never saw that. But apparently there was this rumbling going on around that Becky Lynch was going to be taking time off. Well, she debuted those rumors in a social media post saying, yeah, um, not going away. Matter of fact, I'm getting ready to do this WWE UK tour. So, ha, it's like, <laughs> so FYI uh, on that one. A little bit of sad news to uh, talk about here on the show. For those of you that were fans of Beyond the Mat, Tony Jones, who was featured on there, he passed away uh, this week, very young age too, uh, 53. Now, some of you guys hear that, you go, that's pretty old. It's like 53 is actually young. 53 is actually young. Um, As far as the cause of death, nothing revealed right now uh tony jones longest time independent wrestler who was featured in beyond the mat all pro wrestling they're the ones that had made the announcement over the weekend that he passed away again no details given he was a regular and all pro uh in california throughout his career which began in the late 1990s where uh, he began his training under Mike Modis, and from there, during his first run in APW, he had a feud with Vic Grimes and won the APW Universal Tag Team Championships alongside Jay Smooth as the West Side Connection. He then regained the titles uh, with a new partner in Steve Rizzono, then was forced to vacate them when Rizzono was suspended by the company. He immediately regained them with Modis, forming the tag team Wrestling Inc., Jones and Mod has received a tryout for WWE. Those of you may recall that because that's what was documented in the Beyond the Mat. He eventually was invited to WWE's training camp. Uh, back then, you know, it wasn't NXT. Uh, it wasn't even FCW. Back then, it was the uh, dojo joint under Dr. Tom Pritchard. Uh, but he never ended up signing a deal with the WWE. Uh, He did get a WCW tryout, but eventually returned to APW. Did a lot of work as enhancement talent on a few occasions in the WWE. Uh, That pretty much was it. As far as like, when was the last time he wrestled? He did something around 2017, 2018, and that pretty much was it. So uh, definitely for the friends, family, colleagues of Tony Jones uh, may that young man rest in peace a uh, bit of a lighter note much lighter note no bad news here well as far as passing goes no passing but definitely a shocker in the wrestling community especially considering the longtime WWE community relations director uh, what's her name? I think it's Sue Atchison. You remember her? Remember back in 2019, she was the recipient of the Warrior Award. Yeah, well, she apparently was let go by the WWE. It's kind of interesting because a lot of the wrestling news um, websites, you know, they do a lot of copying and pasting. And some sites were being put under... The microscope is like, okay, so was she let go or was she fired? What, you know, like the terminology somehow was being debated upon um, throughout several sites. And I know the original, the original wrestling news site that first broke the news, it was Mike Johnson of PW Insider. And the terminology, the phrasing, the exact phrasing that he used was Atchison was let go by the WWE. 
So, you know, here's a person that had worked for 38 years for the company. I mean, really stop and think about that for a second. 38 years with one employer. That's a long time. You talk about dedication and, and just all of that. That is a long, long time. She served as the director of community relations for the company. And uh, she started back in WWE in 1986. I mean, that is just, if you go back, now that I'm thinking about it, there were previous Hall of Fame ceremonies where usually she was around the arm of John Cena. Fun fact, go back in and check out some of the pictures uh, and everything. She was the one directly responsible for building the company's relationship with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, helped launch the company's old WrestleMania reading challenge, the Make-A-Wish, uh, you know, all that, all that. Um, huge shocker, huge shocker that, you know, that she was let go. You know, you hear that and you're just like, wow, well, if you're going to let this person go, don't you think that with 38 years of dedication to one employer, that the proper way to do it is, you know, look, we're going to let you go, but we're going to let you finish out the month of April and we want to give you a big proper send off. So we're going to throw a, a party for you. No, none of that. None of that. Sure, her responsibilities, right, as she got older, sure. Yeah. Maybe more and more was taken off of her shoulders and it was delegated, right, elsewhere. But still, that is just... There are so many wrestlers that took the social media to react to this news. Some that work in WWE... Others that don't work in WWE, you're not going to find one bad thing when you do your research. Well, you're not going to find one bad thing said about Sue Atchison. Uh, that's how much of a, of a saint uh, she was. So very unfortunate, very unfortunate what's going on there. Uh, I know WWE had revealed during Raw tonight that apparently if you go to the Mattel Creations site, there is a CM Punk action figure that you guys will be able to pre-order right now. Now, as far as when it's going to be released, you could be looking at the fourth quarter of this year, first quarter of 2025. But basically, uh, it's CM Punk in a t-shirt. It's when he returned at Survivor Series. That's the version that you're getting. You're not getting the in-ring attire CM Punk. I don't like the render. I got to be honest with you. I looked at it and the render is really, really bad. Now, some folks would say, well, Lee, that's Mattel for you. You're probably right about that. I liked it better when it was under Jack Specific. Um, Pacific. I liked it better when it was under there. Speaking of CM Punk, look, I'm not going to be long winded about this, but I did see the footage. I did see the footage. I didn't even bother watching Dynamite when it was live last Wednesday. I didn't even bother. I just said, I know somebody's going to post that footage on social media, so I'm just going to, about 20 minutes, check social media, see what's up. I saw the footage in question, the all-out brawl, whatever the hell it was, the brawl with Jack Perry. I saw that. I'm looking at it, and what more could I say? Because I know, I, I know a lot of you are curious, you know, Lee, what do you, what do you make of that? What did you think about that? What more could I say that my colleagues in the podcasting wrestling world hasn't already said? I mean, I, I'm with the overall consensus, which is how did this help AEW and Tony Khan? What was there to gain from this? I mean, I know TNA back in the day, they would ride the coattails off of any former star of theirs that have found great success over in WWE. They'd be quick to put together some type of a compilation thing or, you know, maybe they would use that, that old star of theirs that's now in the rival promotion. Maybe they would 
use a piece of them back when they were in TNA as a highlight footage to hype up a pay-per-view or whatever. But this was, um, I almost had to catch myself, but this was riding on a whole new level. You know the riding I'm talking about for AEW. I I just looked at this and, and I just went, who signed off on this? Obviously Tony Khan, but like when it counted the most, where were the people to say to him, hey boss, this is a really, really bad idea. Don't really think you should be going with this. This could truly backfire. Let's go in a different direction here. And to air that footage, and it went down to the T exactly of what CM Punk had described in his interview with Ariel Hawani. You know, when somebody needs to sit Tony Khan down, this is the one thing that I haven't heard anybody say that I'll mention that's new. Folks need to sit Tony Khan down when it comes to these really cool ideas that he has, right? And in the case of this CM Punk footage, what should have been done was, okay, let's take a white piece of paper. Hell, we can use this canvas board over here and let's just write pros, cons, and let's just go. What would be the pros and cons of showing this? And whatever list has more at the very end, then that's pretty much your winner. And I would challenge anybody on the cons side of side of things, not K H A N S C O N S. I bet you the cons in this case definitely outweighs the pros. And then you got to break it down as far as short-term gain, long-term gain. Okay, how does this help us in the short term, if at all? And if it does help us, are there any consequences to that as a result? Again, everything ties back into pros, cons. And then at that point, you just got to say, okay, well, is it really worth the risk? This was not the case. Okay, great. Great. You got a ratings bump. You got a ratings bump. Great. You fooled them once. Okay, great. But what's going to happen the following week? And I would imagine it's going to be a significant drop off the following week. I've never seen so many. It got to a point where I've never seen so many hardcore AEW fans even go, yeah, man, even for me, that was a bit too much. Like they kind of irritated me with that stunt to the point. I remember I had polled you guys. Now this is my first time talking about the polling results, but uh, we polled you guys in regards to this uh, a week ago, almost a week ago. And uh, I know on YouTube, I'm looking at the poll right now. Uh, We titled it the ultimate actually, No, not that one. It is actually, here it is. I found it. After tonight's CM Punk footage airing, does it make you more or less a fan of AEW and Tony Khan? 13% of the votes. More like hype and drama. Coming in at 19%. The same, honestly. Coming in at 26%. Less gonna stop watching top dog right now with 42% of the votes less cheap move by Tony Khan. Now over on X formerly known as Twitter. Let's see if I can get those results uh, for you. I might have to look in my interaction section so I can find it a little quicker here. Bear with me a second. But definitely shout out to those that had cast their vote via. And I have it now for uh, X. Coming in at 28%. The same, honestly. 
31% less going to stop watching and at 40% less. Cheap move by Khan. I'm really concerned about the percentage that said less going to stop watching. Those, those are the people you got to be concerned about because nine times out of 10, those were probably your most hardcore slash borderline overzealous AEW fans that would you just... You know, baby. You know, baby. They would just through and through go to bat for the company. They would, no, you got it wrong. It's actually, look, you got to give the guy a chance. I mean, they would just... Tony Khan could do no wrong. But in this instance, even they had to draw the line and say, yeah, man, what the hell? Like, no. Okay, you get a ratings pop. That's great. And you saw how much of a backlash this was because I remember seeing this all play out in real time. And it was funny. We had people that were so quick to share this footage. And before Dynamite was off the air, freaking copyright strikes, left and right. That's how bad of a backfire this was. They were going after any and everybody. I remember when Ariel Hawani had even matched up the clip of Punk talking to what the footage CM Punk had showed, right? It synced up perfectly. And even they got hit with a copyright. And Ariel's going, I don't understand. Like, what? Right, no, because it backfired. It backfired on Tony Khan and AEW. They thought that they were going to be able to have this last laugh on CM Punk. Yeah, you know, let us show you the, the bully, the you know whatever. They thought they were going to be able to get this last laugh bearing him, while also trying to get over this program that the Bucks are having with FTR. And nobody is there going to remotely say. If you're any of those guys, this is a bad idea because, like, check cleared. Okay, let's go out there. Let's have some fun. Let's make the most out of this, right? That's it at the end of the day. I promise you. I promise you the day, and it it will come, the day that FTR is done with AEW, bet you about a dollar. They're going to be like, yeah, man, we weren't really sure what the hell Tony Khan was thinking when it came to that, we honestly thought that was a really dumb freaking move. I know everybody's talking about Tony Schiavone. Man, um, Tony Schiavone, you're not going to get it. Like, come on. You think Tony Schiavone is really going to be honest? You're not going to bite the hand that's feeding you right now you're not going to bite the hand that's signing your checks you're not going to do that that's like the stupidest thing you can do anybody that has worked a honest day's work in their life sign a w-2 or anybody that's actually worked for a living you ain't gonna do that that is freaking suicide it's stupid you're not gonna do that so this idea that Tony Schiavone, and I get it, you know, all his facial expressions, you know, yeah. I saw the screenshots, all that stuff that was going on. The way I looked at that, I just said, okay, we're selling the moment. But if he really was disappointed and the whole nine yards, all of that, if he really was, he's, he's not going to tell you while he's still employed in AEW. He's not going to tell you. So, I wish I could tell you more, but, I mean, that's it, right between the eyes. I, it doesn't get any more crystal clearer than that. I, I wish I had more for you, but that's as plain and simple and, and straight up in your face as it's going to be. Uh, but that was just, let me, let me be candid with you guys. It was crap like that. Like I was telling some of my friends privately, I said, it's crap like that that has turned me off of the AEW product. To the point, I don't bother checking out Collision or Dynamite. I I don't bother. I'm happy for the men and women 
They have a place to work and, and everything over there. I'm happy for them and all that. But there's just been one too many hiccups under Tony Khan's watch that I'm just like, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm out right now. So the only thing I'm committing to right now for AEW, if you follow my work over on the website, 401 Mania, I'm doing the Rampage reviews. Hey, when AEW does a pay-per-view, I don't mind checking those out. I, I can rest know, rest knowing that when it comes to their pay-per-views, AEW always delivers. They typically always deliver a solid pay-per-view. I'm looking forward to the Dynasty pay-per-view. The way the card is shaping up right now looks pretty damn good. I'm definitely going to be checking it out. But the Weekly Dynamites, Collisions, I'm out on those. I am out on those. Unless there is something truly substantial that, nah, man, you got to go out of your way. You got to check this out, man. This is like some, you know, it's one of those, nah, you know what, I'm good. Seriously, I'm good. Hell, I don't even mind the Battle of the Belt specials that they do. The Battle of the Belts 10 special that they did over the weekend. Even though it was only three matches, it was actually pretty damn good. That hour went by so damn fast. It's actually pretty good. And uh, look, on a positive tip, I'm happy that Tony Khan and AEW are now putting themselves in a position where when it comes to Rampage, they're making it follow up behind Dynamite, and or collision make sure you set your dvrs for this weekend because after collision you're going to get a live rampage that's all happening because of the nba playoffs remember it starts uh this tuesday on tnt the play in tournaments basically so i'm looking forward to that my favorite time of the year love the nba playoffs but you know i have a feeling that as far as the future goes this is something that's going to be happening regularly on the norm right down to the point. I wouldn't be surprised if Warner Brothers Discovery goes, look, as far as Rampage goes, it needs a really good, strong lead in going forward. We got to have it follow up behind uh, Dynamite or Collision going forward. And I totally would be fine for that. I don't know about you guys, but I totally would be fine for that. So as long as it's for me at this point, it's all about the cosmetic feel of it. As long as you do something that makes it very distinct, makes it stand out more. Okay, I know when I tune into this particular show, I'm going to see this color commentating team or the action is going to be shot in this particular way. It's going to have a different look. It's going to have a different feel. I know when CM Punk was trying to do his thing with Collision, you definitely got that vibe. It was night and day collision compared to dynamite. And now for the most part, it's just, you know, it's almost the same show, but some would actually make the argument, even the most hardcore AEW fan would make the argument collision is better than dynamite. So, but me, I've, I've like clocked out now is I'm going to focus that time and energy on, you know, other promotions, you know, especially promotions I haven't seen in a while, like TNA. I know there's a great rivalry that's been going on with Nick, uh, uh, Dolph Ziggler and Moose. Uh, they getting ready to lock it up at a pay-per-view in a couple of weeks. So looking, trying to get caught up on them and all that. So it's a, it's a good time and everything, but it's just when you see this dumb crap that just keeps happening over and over and over. And then you got Tony Khan saying all kinds of stuff about WWE. And it's like, man, it's kind of like what I said on social media. Just worry about yourself. Worry about what you're doing. Worry about your brand, right? You making some good moves. Talk about those good moves. You got a good pay-per-view that's coming up with a really solid card. Talk about that. You know, it's no different than I saw a lot of the people that were commenting on uh, Denise, I mean, she works for so many different wrestling websites, mainly Fightful. I, I think she's, you know, kind of most known for. Uh, Denise, uh, I, I always have a hard time mispronouncing her name. I, if I see the last name, I could pronounce it easily, but trying to remember off the top of my head and pronounce it, not so good. But I, I saw how certain people were commenting on her work. 
talking about uh, their lack of what she doesn't offer and, and all this other crap. I even saw uh, reputable uh, YouTube personalities comment on her work and, and was doing it in the most foul um uh, what's the right word I'm looking for? Foul and uh, offensive way of critiquing her work. I'm looking at this and I'm going, well, what's it to you? Who the hell is she bothering? You know, it's not like she's bothering you. It's not like she's bothering your audience. You know, there are certain people that, you know, that like what she does. There are certain people, and look, you know, if you want to say within reason, oh, well, we know damn well that if this was a male, you know, forget about it. She wouldn't, that male wouldn't have all the type of attention, right? If you flip the gender, and you're probably right about that. So to her credit, she may be using her her gender, her looks, to get away with certain things and rub out. Yeah, it's, it's very well possible, but here's the difference, you know, or the big question, why should it matter to you? Why should you care about it? What harm is it doing to you in a day and age where there is so much goddamn variety that's out there? And you know, what was even more mind boggling about this too? was the fact that we had grown-ass men. Grown-ass men. I could under, you know, like, teenagers, teenage boys, like, I'm not tripping over, you know, young guys in their 20s talking the crap about Denise. Okay. But grown-ass men in their 30s and up, that's taking these jabs at Denise. I don't know Denise. I don't speak to her. I don't, um... I don't interact with any other people on Fightful. Probably the only person I interact with once in a while, Rob Wilkins of Fightful. I know he's been on a journey, you know, weight loss and all that. And, you know, you know, usually, you know, I, I see him share a, a health update. Sometimes I'll swap health stories with him publicly. And, and I mean, that's really about it. But I don't really, you know, know Rob like that. But I know that there's been times where, I've had some dark days and I've said something publicly and Rob has been like, Hey Lee, you know, nothing but love, man. Hang in there, dog. And, and I appreciate that. Right. So ain't no Fightful check for your man. I'm not looking for a check from Fightful. All I'm saying is, oh, we got all these mofos. Like what's it to you? Why should it matter? Day and age where, like, you can pick whatever is out there that best suits your flavor for how you like to talk of wrestling and all that. What Denise does, some people like that. I know for the longest time, true story, in my much younger years as a podcaster, I remember, is her name Lug Eye? Uh, The blonde-haired girl that would always show her reactions to WWE Raw or whatever. She'd have the little image going on. And I remember there was a couple of times I used to come on her channel and I would say, how are you able to do this without getting in trouble by the WWE? Like, aren't you worried about a copyright or something like that? And rather than her respond to me, she would delete my comment. And I'm like, okay, I was just trying to break the ice. Like, like, damn, like, okay. But, like, I remember back in the day, I used to look at some of her stuff because I would see how she would, and I would go, like, what the hell? I don't get it. Like, her style, her execution, like, there's no substance. There's no, and then it just dawned on me, look, she's got her thing. Go do your thing, right? And that especially rings true to grown-ass men that's out there. That is coming after this woman. It's like you got to get your priorities straight. Just worry about you. As I always like to say. If it ain't about positivity. Right. If it's not about. Yo man let me pick your brain for a minute. I need to rap to you. Because I'm trying to figure out. How I can get to this particular. Position in my career. 
you know, what tips, what advice, right? You're not looking for a handout. You're, you're just looking for, you know, just point me in the right direction, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to go in the right direction, there's nothing wrong with that. But some of these people that I saw that was coming at her the way that they came at her, I, I just looked at that and I just said, you know, priorities, priorities, flip it back to Tony Khan, priorities, priorities. Don't worry about what other people are saying and, and doing. Don't worry about what this company is doing over here and, and what this wrestler had said over here, right? Stop being so goddamn reactionary. Just put your head down, go forward, put in the work. You're going to mess up along the way. It's expected. What's also expected is you learn from those mistakes and you don't do them again. You keep doing them, right? You're going to lose respect real quick. And, and that's the point that I'm making of all of this. You know, he's made so many mistakes so far that a lot of people are now at that juncture where, yo, it's really hard to defend this guy. Like, just, I, I'm out, <laughs> right? A lot of people are like, I'm out. I can't, like, I, I, I can't, no, right? And I wouldn't be surprised if there was a lot of wrestling fans out there that's like operating the same way that I'm operating now, which is don't care for the dynamite, don't care for the collision. I'm now just checking out the little battle of the bell specials or I'm just strictly the pay-per-views. I would not be surprised if that's to the point. I think I might create a poll sometime this week. I think I might create a poll just to see what's going on with AEW or wrestling fans in general when it comes to the AEW shows and see what's up. Other than that, just looking at some of the uh, stuff that's going on here, I don't think anything news, as far as breaking news goes, I don't think anything has gone down since last I poked my head. Everything seems to be nice and quiet. I'm going to poke my head in the feeds real quick just to make sure everything's on point. But it looks like uh, looks like everything is is nice and quiet. So look, as far as programming, though, shout out to everybody that's joined us via X. By the way, appreciate you guys. X, formerly known as Twitter, appreciate you guys. So as far as programming notes go, I will be back on the air later this week. Uh, I think we'll probably do something. So Rampage is this Saturday, right? I think we'll come on uh, Friday night after. SmackDown goes off the air. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll come on, you know, a little bit after 10, 1030. And uh, we'll talk some SmackDown, talk some other wrestling news. I'm still processing what's going on with Tommy Tonga and the WWE now. I think that's a very smart move. Uh, if you've listened to this show for a long time, you know how much of a fan I am of Jacob Fatu. Uh, so the fact that potentially he's now in the WWE. I mean, I'm very excited about that. But my question is, Jacob Fatu, what about um, that manager of his? I used to know the manager's name. Is it Joseph Samael? Like, is he part of the whole? Because, man, he's good. He is good as a mouthpiece. He is good. WWE would be fools to not take advantage of him as a manager. But, yeah, we'll definitely do a show for you guys Friday. I'm hoping by then my voice will be a lot clearer, uh, more liquidy, got that nice smoothness to it. Although my uh, chloroseptic max drops, they have been helping. So I'm going to rest up in between. Meantime, catch up on shows you might have missed on demand and on the downloads wherever you get your podcast. Just search the RCWR show. Speaking of podcasts. I don't know if you guys have saw it. I tried sharing the news on social media, but shout out to the good folks that's been listening to us over on Good Pods because so far, and it's fluctuating, but uh, last I had saw, which I had shared just a couple of days ago, we had made the top for the month of April. We had made the top 100 list of uh, wrestling shows for the month of April that folks have been listening to so they're checking out the metrics and all that and everything and last i saw we were fluctuating between uh 24 25 at the time that i got the email they said congrats you're in the top 20 out of the 100 
podcast in the wrestling category. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then all of a sudden it was, you know, okay, now you're 25 out of 100 or something like that. And I'm just going, uh, okay, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, for those that's been listening via Good Pods, uh, again, you uh, t- <laughs> what? <laughs> My wife just sent me a text message and she's missing so many syllables. I'm seeing oh oh e talk e v I don't know what the hell she's saying. <laughs> I don't know what the hell she's saying. Um oh okay. Okay. She's asking me to come get the girls cuz uh they're uh, our our little furry daughters are uh are ready to go use the bathroom apparently. So that's cool. But no, uh shout out to our folks that's been listening via good pods. Appreciate that support. Uh, as I always say, however you're accessing the shows, show the support means a lot, tremendously, big time, right? And uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Until next go around, wishing all of y'all to be safe. Most importantly, be kind to one another. I will see you guys next go around. Adios, y'all, and take care.